How goes the lives of the people who play D&D with me? Pretty good. good. That's bad. It Ooh, could be better, but it could be point. worse, too. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Overall, yeah. You yeah. know, it's good. Anybody else, anybody else see Joe Rogan try and shoot a 90-pound a bow and therefore the arrow through a Cybertruck? I didn't. How'd nope. that go? Yeah, <laughs> I heard I heard the description that Joe Rogan gave, and then all, all I got was a picture from it from uh, what Musk posted on X. But uh, like the the broadhead arrow like bent in on itself, and the wooden shaft just like exploded, and there was like no dent on the cyber truck. Ow. I mean, I've heard good things about the you know truck. The few people I've seen. A lot of people at my job have them, so. That's something like 7,000 pounds of pure steel and, like, completely bulletproof. <laughs> uh, sounds like sounds like the perfect car to have in most western cities of the U.S. Of the U.S. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I got, a, I got a buddy out there who just took his car in for the smog test. He lives in San Francisco. He parks his car on the street, and he says he opens the trunk and rolls down his windows every night. He said because people are going to go through his stuff, he'd rather them not break the windows or break his lock. Yep. What the fuck? I had a working unexpected double on Friday, but other than that... <laughs> so, like, you're saving up for your Cybertruck? That's what you mean, Ben? Uh, I suppose you could say that. Very nice, very nice. And just what happened was a um, co-worker of mine was like, hey, I need to swap shifts with you on Friday. Could you work my uh, 3 to 11 and I'll work your 11 to 7. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And, you know, it'll be like an eight-hour turnaround, but nothing I haven't done before. But then uh, apparently he felt really bad because his legs were bothering him to the point he couldn't practically move, let alone walk. And he called out like at 9 o'clock right before, I was like a couple hours before he was supposed to come in and Fucking no one called me that let me know that, hey, uh, something's been up. We don't have anybody to relieve you. So uh, unless you can get one of your other in-house guys to come in, spot you, you're going to be there like the entire rest of the goddamn night. So <laughs> didn't find that out until about like 30 minutes until he was like 30 minutes after he was supposed to come by and relieve me. It kind of pissed me off, but <laughs> ah, I got some fat OT for it. So, you know, fuck it. Always nice. All right, happy people. We left off last game. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. Yay. And that was with the three party members competing in the battle pits. The battle pits. Getting some fun, exciting things going on with <clears throat> fighting barbarians or berserkers and you guys survived i wouldn't say you dominated but you survived and sometimes that's better than nothing now the question and we got is, wait no we didn't get paid yet did we yes you will be paid uh, so you can add it to your sheet at your, Just, your ledger. Out of, out of curiosity, what the, um, what's my hit points at? Uh, zero. <laughs> they are. They are currently at zero, yes. They are at zero. Cool, 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 cool. Are my uh, hit points at zero, too? Or am I conscious or unconscious? You guys are going to be stable and conscious. But, okay. Uh, you're gonna go back up to one hit point. And okay, then... so now, now good dragging us both out. Yeah, one on uh, a hand on e each of your legs. You can drag him by the tail if you want to. Assorted limbs. Nalka just dumps the bodies in front of the nearest healer. <laughs> it's just an unceremonious pile. Somebody fix these up. I don't know careful how. Not to, careful not to pull out any feathers. 
So uh, the nearest healer, uh, as yeah, you, it, I'll, you... I'll go in and do some cure wounds and whatever else I need to get done. All right, so that was uh, a good chunk of your day. So I'm going to apply a long rest. Woo. Because you guys spent some time getting everything lined up. Nobody, I, I recall last game, I kind of was checking with everybody, see what they wanted to do. And everybody wanted to kind of focus on this. Which is fantastic, because there was blood and gore. And all kinds of fun stuff. Let's see. I am applying that long rest. You can adjust your hit points if you want. I am going to start to move down the gaming music because I forgot to move it in and out. So I'll move it back up and back down. Get that going. All right. With all of that, you guys are rested. I was tracking the days, but I have to find out where I, I got to grab my notes. So I'll put you on day. A couple, you've been in the city for a couple days. You guys spent some working things of that nature so you guys have started to acclimate pretty well to the city you are nearing not completely but um, complete acclimation so I'm showing you guys spent a couple days working some days moving in and around the city things like that and you find yourselves now no longer under the penalty if you guys just sat around the city and did nothing then you would not have uh it would have taken you essentially two ten days of a passive acclimation let me remove these there we go uh kazu and Nauka yes. and Arthenis, you guys will actually have a benefit. People, not a lot of people, but uh, a good amount of people will either recognize you, recognize your name from moving through the circles that watch and pay attention to the battle pits. So I'm removing all the penalties. In addition to that, you guys... I'm working on the assumption that your days at this point consist of going to whatever it is you chose to do with your time that week in terms of employment and then the party kind of I assume gathers back towards the end but to decide what they're going to do with the rest of their day did everybody or uh, see the wages document I sent. Do I have any well, questions, about, questions that? about that? Yeah. Well, no to the questions, but yes, I saw. It's pretty <laughs> straightforward. It, generally, it's intended to uh, make sure you could do that type of uh, uh, work with skilled labor because it's important to realize you guys are skilled labor. So, when before the end of the day, though, um, uh, Cass is going to go try and find a locksmith shop. Okay. To try and, you know. Make work. that her yeah. work at? Okay. It uh, easily acquired with her skill in locksmitheries. And you are going to be doing that. And so that's going to be what you do. So after, at the beginning of the next day, during the actual active part of this planet's day. Is there anything anyone wants to do prior to the start of the, I mean, or the conclusion of the quote unquote work day? Okay. 
Well, when the party returns, coming back together towards, uh, you know, early afternoon, you still have, you know, most of the afternoon and the evening, you actually have a letter that was left specifically for Arthanis, Hazel, and <clears throat> Nauka. Oh? So it's probably three in the afternoon on using to use our time as a measurement. And there is a letter, and it's addressed to each of you. Interesting. Um, uh, why don't you go ahead and open it up and see what it says. Naka, I volunteer you. Can you read? Um, not <laughs> well, but we can see what happens. Nauka opens the letter. So Nauka does her their best to open the letter. Their best. <laughs> and succeeds. <laughs> now you guys Hooray! <laughs> and succeeds. <laughs> so you open the letter, and inside is a invitation. It is very short. It is very concise. It's a very neat script. And what it specifically says is you are invited to a meeting in reference to potential employment it has a specific date I mean a specific time that's about four hours from now and it says you are to meet at the gatehouse of the Avar Coterie I'm going to type that for you Interest. Looks like someone wants us to join again. Why would they want me? No, Tony, no. Would, would we no. know? Do we, do we know what each of the courtiers kind of stands for? Or, or... Uh, you know, <clears throat> you know that the coteries each have kind of a nickname, and then you know a I mean, a small amount about them. You're still learning quite a bit. So we know this was the the one of of light. Whatever that yes. means. Uh, give me an okay. intelligence check. From Hazel, right? <laughs> I mean, the whole My investigation, if you would like. Sure. <laughs> Techno don't know shit. I am so smart, dude. <laughs> yeah, we figured, we figured. <laughs> Anybody else so, want to roll? Oh, oh, sure. Um, I have a question though, Tony. In the, uh, yeah. the coteries list, you said that there's nine dominant coteries. There's only yes. eight listed. One of them is listed twice. I wasn't sure if that was on purpose or. It is. It not. is. Castacar is listed twice as the red coterie. That's probably a typo on my part. I will see if I can fix that. Probably won't be until tomorrow, but it'll be done. So, some stellar rolls there, with the exception of Hazel. Um, Hazel, what you know, the only thing you've heard in and around your work um what are you what skill are you using i believe it was alchemy wasn't it uh yeah brewing helping around a tavern it doesn't necessarily have to be a tavern but yeah essentially brewing yeah um yep. what you've heard especially in those circles is that the avar coterie is uh, in control of, of them has a monopoly on l wealthy client entertainment Ooh. such as retreats high-end casinos using their access to gates or a gate then or one gate or multiple gates to allow the wealthy 
to vacation off planet. Sounds promising. So that's all you've heard from p clients <laughs> passing through. Okay, I will relay that to the party. But what I've heard. Ooh, fancy. If they have access to gates. Perhaps one of us could could lead us home. Mm hmm. I'd shot. be willing to talk to them. As would I. As, uh, as long as one, yeah, one of you two is also along with me, of course. Would it be appropriate for all of us to go, do you think? Or do you think they would be offended by that? Uh, I would tell you if you don't have an invitation, you're not supposed to go. Yeah, I wouldn't risk it. Well, but we're risking something else if we don't bring everyone. We... Hmm? Could always bring them along and then see if they're not allowed inside where we're trying to go. That's my vote. I think everyone should go, or anyone who wants to go should go. We can claim that there are bodyguards. Oh, I definitely want to go. I'm just saying I'm not going to be welcome, but I'm going to stay anyways. Everyone is my bodyguard, of course. Of course, yep, we, of course are. we are. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Kazu. Does anyone disagree? Uh... No, it makes sense to me. Not knowing the city terribly well yet, like, it gave us a location, right, Tony? It did. It so, was... I know it's a few, a few hours away. Do we, do we have time to eat or do something before we go, or do, should we yeah, head it'd out? Yeah, it probably take you 30 minutes to walk there. It's within okay. the city. I mean, we could even we could even leave early and try and kind of scout out, see what this place is about before we uh, announce ourselves there. Sure. Whatever the lead hand of my bodyguard team would like to do, yes. Guys. Whose Is name was the... first on the letter? Uh, the alphabetical. Oh, lame. <laughs> as it should be, as it should be. So, Kishut, have you been into this area before on, on your solo travels? Where's the area at on the map? The circle? No, that's your guys' tavern. The <clears throat> Avar Coterie safe house i'm sorry uh headquarters i suppose is way down by the uh market way down yonder no close to where i, I would be working mm -hmm. no i did not go down that way would i know would i um like on my way to and from work would i see like the type of people that walk through there you do uh, and they tend to resemble priests, white robes, carrying ever-burning lanterns. But in addition to that, their building has almost like a spotlight going down onto it or up from it. It's pretty, it's pretty ostentatious and grandiose. Um, yeah, I feel like... It's a lot of, like, holy men and women. Holy holy people, is that the correct term? Who gives a shit? Um, a <laughs> lot of people in robes with lanterns that don't ever go out, even when it's raining. It's just weird, I think. Um, and then it's got some, like, spotlight on the top of the building. It's, it's, it's you know, it's... Blech. Like, I don't think we're in danger, is what I'm trying to say. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, they're not, like, thugs. 
They're just a bunch of fucking holy guy people. Oh, thank heavens. Oh, thank oh. I was worried. We that never know. Yes, thank the heavens indeed. Uh, anybody want to do anything before we go? Nope. Nope, I don't think so, no. Off we go then? Then let us leave for the light. The got three. Oh god. Got so you three. guys are Sorry. making your way across the city. Everything is starting to wind down, not completely. There's still things and conversations going on. Um business especially there in uh, the market as you guys make your way up there is a four-armed person waiting at the door for you it's very clear they're waiting at the door for you because when you start to approach they move forward they are wearing leather armor it is white and they have a small emblem on their chest that is radiating light outwards. How tall are they? Good question. This person is five foot eight. I am. Kazu six foot. I'm five ten. I'm also five ten. I'm Wait, five Kazu 11. six foot? Six, yeah. Oh, damn, I thought he was a lot shorter than that. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, that's racist. Just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I'll just, like, look at What the hell damn, are you talking <laughs> <laughs> Is Techno actually the shortest one among us? I'm, he's only, like, 5'11 or, like, 5'10. No, not bad. No. Australia's 5'10. No, uh, Hazel's five ten. I'm sorry, he's five. Nine. Techno's five nine. I'm sorry, I had a double check. Character change. Oh, looks like Techno stalking. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone missed the mute button. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't even go with my uh, push and talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jeez. Well, if, uh... I'll shove Techno forward. Go on. Good luck. Ah, oh, jeez, putting me on the spot. Okay, fine. I'm right beside you. It's so all good. You got so your back. So Techno greets the guards. Kind of just kind of in the casual. Hey, how you doing? Uh. So the four-armed person walks forward, looks at the group, and looks at uh, all of you. Looking at uh, Kazu, looking to uh, Arthanis, and of course Nauka, and then looks at Techno. It makes, seems to accept Techno as your representative, and says, "Do you speak for the warriors from the battle pits?" They say Tendo just forces a grin and says that he does. The person introduces themselves, says, I am Ashtrawak. I Pleased to meet you. The Avar Coterie. We are the Coterie of Light. Tendo quickly turns to the rest of the group. We don't know what we're doing. No. My nope. name is Nalka. <laughs> like, Estrella uh, actually, uh, like, spit laughs. <laughs> nope. Not that. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not going with that. <laughs> We've already had that joke into the ground. Uh. We're called Godspeed. No. <laughs> no. We don't have a name. Blast offs. The Iron Fist. No. I'm sure we'll find some. Guns and Roses. Huh. So she looks at every. She looks all of you. Sorry, go ahead. 
No, you're I guess you could just call us the no, bunch I of outcasts. I want to hear. I want to hear what cast yes. you. I was just gonna say SG1. SG1. There you go. Yeah. Suicide Squad. So, so uh, Ashley asks you guys. Uh, asks specifically Techno. Are you authorized to accept? and engage in contracts on behalf of this group. Say I am. Oh, man. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have no faith. Just have faith in them. Just let it. Let's. I want to see how this plays out. Let's see if the Suicide Squad can survive. We're not uh, Suicide Squad. <laughs> Ashrock uh, makes a motion towards a door off to the side for everyone to go through. <laughs> there are guards. She walks up, unlocks it, opens it. I may be authorized to make decisions on behalf of this group, but I'm not going to you know, disregard anyone else. We make decisions as a group. So, so pardon me if I discuss it, my uh, decisions with my companions before we commit to anything. She says if you will lead your group into the room, we can have a conference. We would like to discuss something with you. That sounds good to me. Everyone, if you'll uh, follow me. Indeed we will. Mm-hmm. So inside is a series of chairs with adjustable heights and a table that is also adjustable. And she takes a seat and adjusts her height to a median and waits for the group to adjust theirs accordingly. Yep, we'll do. Nalka's legs end up swinging in the air. Just a swinging. They're short. Only five feet. Oh. You're just a little guy. Just a little guy. Just a wee little lad. You wouldn't hurt a little guy with glasses and two axes, would you? Would you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, Probably specifically should. because of the just the two axes alone. <laughs> it tells me. Anyway. So, Ashrawak says, you as outsiders seem uncomfortable with the representative who stepped forward making agreements, and this requires an agreement, so I prefer a conference. She said, one of our agents reported that she makes a motion towards Nauka, Kazu, and Arthanis. You handled yourselves quite well in a formidable battle pit. We... We did? Yes, we did. Did I look cool? You looked amazing, Jeez. dude. She says, I wasn't there, but reports are that you survived and did so with skill. I cannot say how cool or not cool, but... You did well enough that we are interested in offering you some employment. We're listening. She says, we require a group of mercenaries unaffiliated with any of the coteries, preferably off-worlders. You seem to fit the bill for all three. Can you verify that you are unaffiliated with any coterie in the city? Yes. And confirm. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't have any better passage or marks or anything of that nature. <laughs> she says, we have a problem we would like addressed. Recently, a local gang reached a point in its strength that they declared themselves and registered themselves as a coterie. 
and as one of their first actions, they raided one of our storehouses with the aid of an insider. We have dealt with the insider according to the laws of the city. And now, for political reasons, we require to strike back at this newly formed coterie. Gangs are criminals. Coteries are lawfully recognized, arbit auditor-governed organizations. We do not wish to shadow our forces by stooping to suggest this coterie is of our level, but a response must be forthcoming. Okay, and what coterie is this that you'd have us investigate? She says, I... To be clear, we are not looking for you to investigate. We are looking for you to raid. Well, I mean... She says, they call themselves the Daytar or Coterie. Daytar. They are not on the council. They are not a powerful Coterie. They are a newly formed Please. Coterie who sought to make a name for themselves and they reached too far and too high. Being that they're a gang, do they tend to work in the shadows? Perhaps why they, they targeted you uh, as as a, an enemy? It is likely their gang past guided them to make bad decisions. They have legally transitioned from unlawful to lawful but are conducting themselves in a manner unbefitting of a auditor recognized coterie. Indeed. Do they have any legendary members? Anybody we should worry about? They have none that we are aware of. We have located one of their safe houses and we would like you to raid their safe house. How you go about it is up to you. And just to be clear, just to be clear, make sure we're on the same page here. So we would not be raiding any Shadow Legends. <laughs> you are only to strike at the Daytar Coterie on our behalf. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. And just to be clear, these aren't very nice people, right? She looks over at Kazu and says, nice is relative. They are looking to gain power in a heavily competitive and political arena, dealing in a great deal of money and Lives. Okay. Okay. So I know he, um, Techno is supposed to be speaking for us, but I could care less right now. So the whole point of going and doing this raid, do you want us to bring something back? Do you want us to set the fucking building on fire? Like, I just want to know what we're doing. I mean, uh, if she wasn't going to ask, I was, so. I mean,. She wanted to bring everybody into the room so that everybody could talk, so you're not out of line. Um, as long as you follow the custom of adjusting your chair accordingly. Um, the She tells you that she isn't concerned with how you conduct your business. That's part of hiring outsiders. She, 
they have conducted an affront. They raided one of our buildings, stole everything inside, and ransacked it. There were a number of casualties as well as some fatalities. The state in which you leave the building and its occupants, I will leave to your morals. The intent is to retaliate and make it known that this is a consequence of their action. As, that wasn't very nice of them. As outsiders, we are not held responsible for your conduct to be blunt, since you were blunt. If you scorch the soil, that will not reflect badly or well upon us, but it will convey the message. I will leave it to you to decide. Personally, I think that's all we need to know, but, you know, that's my saying. I'm just going to let everyone else, you know, voice their opinions on this. Well, if they did all that, then retaliation seems appropriate. And, um, I guess if anybody else isn't going to ask the question, how much is this job paying us? We do not have a set price. What is valuable to you on your planet? What is it that you would consider worth this? Uh, I'd look around at the group and just go, well, speaking for myself, um, I think getting home would be the best payment I could ever receive right now. Yeah, agreed. Which isn't on this planet, by the way. Or wherever the hell we are. She says, I do not know where the hell you are from, but we control two gates of Zelargos. Twelve counted gates. We control both planets on the other side. I highly doubt either of them is your home. Unfortunately, that is not within our power to grant you. So then, uh, I guess money, right? And I look at everybody. <laughs> she said, yeah. are you looking for something? Money and information. And Money. Are you looking for something specific in terms of compensation, equipment, money, as a, a relative, I assume, gold would work, or what information? The information we're the looking information... for is if we can find any sort of gate that can lead us to uh, Torrell, specifically Faerun get that information to us that we'd be most grateful. Uh, she shakes her head and she says, I know all 12 gates on Zellar Ghost. That is not a planet any of them go to. I cannot say that they don't go to a planet that has a gate that goes to this planet or have a gate that goes to another planet that also has a gate that may go there. But I can tell you that the vast majority of people do not hold nor have a desire to create maps that would give you this information. Our focus is local politics. We control two gates. Neither of the planets that our gates go to have gates that have been discovered. I cannot promise you that because I do not believe I can get it. Well, at least you're honest. Honesty is one thing, but if you can't give us anything that can help us get home, then um, I'm not too sure what, what our purpose is for helping you then. I mean, if you're you 
I mean, if you're going to scratch our back and you can't scratch ours, then, you know, I don't see much of a reason. They can still give us money. It's not like we'd be doing it for free. Uh, that is true. That is or, true. you know, the love of the job. Nalika looks wistful. <laughs> <laughs> she says, She's... there is legend and rumor among those who study the gates that gates can be reprogrammed, but I am not aware of anyone who is able to do that. That Lomer would be able to know how to do that. Lomerick, okay. What can you tell us about Lomerick? I need to do you. Is that a name that is familiar to you, or. I don't. What are you asking? Is this a person? This is. is this? Uh. Probably, probably not a uh, a good idea to do this, but I do mention that you are looking for someone by that name, and I try not to give too much information, but I do try to explain that hey, we are looking for someone who might be able to help us, and if they know information about this person and can them, then that'd be great. This is. She says, I can inquire an attempt to gather information on this person. I would need you to give me everything you know about them so that I have something to inquire about. And we will compensate you with information. If we are unable to provide this information, we will compensate you with an, an agreed upon amount of gold. Alternatively... Sorry for interrupting. No, nope, go, go, go for it. Alternatively, what about a meeting with a member of the Accord? She shakes her head and says she's not aware of any members of the Bellianic Accord, and the Bellianic Accord are reclusive, hard to find, and if they are in the city, they are probably laying low. She is happy to investigate any contacts that may know of a Bellianic Accord member who is being quiet and in the city, or intending to enter the city. Or she can expend effort to find information on this Lomric, presuming you have more than just a name. But she can't expend resources to find both. You will need to pick one that you want information on, and if she can't get information on that one, they will pay you in gold. I think the Bellionic Accord would probably be the best bet, because honestly, we don't really have a lot of information on Lomberg to go on ourselves. Don't we know the name of the group he's in? Terry Hegemony. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. However, they they, we may we may not want to actually meet those guys. No. Based based on what little we know about, <laughs> about them, we should go with the Accord. Right, right, right. For some reason, I thought Lomberg was involved with the. Involved with the accord, damn it. I fucked up. That, that was my that was my mistake. Well, it's all good. We learned something interesting. I thought he would be more well known than that. Yeah, true, true. That that's good news, I would say. Yeah, that yeah, that's helpful in and of or, itself. Or really bad news. Yeah. Shadow government. Yeah. He is not a very nice person. He did try to have us killed. I mean, so far all you've told her is his name. You haven't told her mm -hmm. that he is a member of the Altari Hegemony. You haven't told her that he is uh, of the, a race called Jagaladine. So this is... Mm -hmm. you can. I'm not going to assume you're inter-party conversation is being shared with her so unless she's actively listening in. in well I mean 
I'm not <laughs> going to assume everything you say to each other is out loud. She's sitting at the same table as us. She has to listen in. I mean, I just sort of imagined us just kind of like huddled in the corner, Do just kind of in a sort of a football huddle. Dubiously in character <laughs> planning. I'll just look over at her and go, um, basically, uh, he's part of the reason why we're here and why we've been abducted, if you will. So. He, he left us naked. I was so embarrassed. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. City? As far as we know, that's where the last reports of him were said. Is he affiliated with any coterie? Is he alone? Is he alone? Again, as far as we know, he left some temple that we were in, not too far from here. Um, I guess in search of parts for his fucking machine or his... his I guess there's a portal there. He came here in search of someone who could repair the gate that we came through. Her eyes kind of widen. Came through a gate. Yeah. A functional gate outside of the city. Semi-functional. Perhaps we did, yes. But of course... That would be valued information that we would only share with some type of reference sense. She says, perhaps we can trade a piece of information for this mission and the location of this gate for the other information on this Lomerick for one and the Bellianic Accord for the other. Do you know who this Lomerick is in the city to see who he or she represents? What species and sex and... Yes. Um, before we divulge that, you said that the organizations such as yourself are all under an auditor? Or there's some type of governance? And the auditor is the governor of the city. The spire, she uh, makes a motion in the direction of the middle of the city is the seat of governance the auditor is the head of the government of the city and whom whom runs the government or what is the government referred to as i apologize we are new here uh, she kind of hand waves away the apology she says that the governor the government is the auditor they there is a position, and the government is also re referred to as the auditor, both the government and the position, showing that they are one and the same. The auditor enforces the laws, the constabulary operate under their authority. I heard word from fellow fighters in the pits that um, something called the Hegemony was controlling the city? Is the uh, auditor uh, also referred to as the Hegemony? She smirks. She says, the Altari Hegemony do not control the city. They made one attempt long ago. And it was made very, very clear that they would not be allowed to disrupt or control Zelargos. This is you are new here. The Altari hegemony are considered friends of the city. They are not considered friends of any planet or city they enter. They seek only to conquer. 
they are permitted in the city. Their claven are lawful slaves under the auditors. One time, very long ago, they threatened the city and they were told if they attempted to carry out an invasion of the city, we would permanently disable all gates on Zelargos and cut the city off from all interplanetary travel rather than fall under the control of the hegemony. That insight check I just made was like trying to determine the how much as as can... truth is in that, yeah. As far as you can tell, the history she's telling you is accurate. It's uh, you're getting the impression she's reciting something quite old, maybe you know, before her time. Probably not, you know, thousands of years, but she says uh, the hegemony did not believe it, and now we have twelve gates instead of thirteen. Lomreg is part of the hegemony. And then I assume he was traveling with Clavin? Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. And their genetically modified soldiers are easy to recognize. And do you know which of the hegemony races he is? I believe that he is a Jadwadai. She gives a little bit of a sneer. Just a little bit. And she says they are vile creatures. They are not native here. She says we will ensure that they are found or information regarding Lamark is found it will not be difficult to locate them but we expect information in return regarding this gate sure sure doesn't have anything to do with us In exchange for the retaliation mission, you would like information on the Bellianic Accord or gold. Is that correct? Actually, um, for myself, if you would be able to find like a Periaptive wound closure? Quite uncommon. I'm struggling to find one in the city. And then a gold uh, to compensate the rest of my payment if it, you know, doesn't fill up that portion. She says, I, I can find you a buyer or a seller for something but you would need to work out the payment between yourselves. Yeah, all right, that sounds fair. Is that something the rest of the party is willing to accept as payment? Oh, Old I was just talking for myself, not for everybody. Okay, so what's the rest of, if she, if she can't find information regarding uh, Bellianic Accord, what is a fair price for this this hit as it were uh 100,000 gold that'd be nice 
You always let you always start yeah, high, there's... and then they work you down. You meet in the middle. Yeah. Well, How's if there? you have any, go ahead. Have was... have any rare plants around that are that have medicinal properties? I would be happy to take some off your hands. She shakes her head for a second. Uh, what were you going to say, Kishu? Maybe 750 gold apiece. She looks first at Kazu and she says, I am not necessarily able to gather all of this that you're looking for, but I believe it would be more beneficial to give turning to Kashut a monetary reward as well as a pointer towards those who can sell you that. Well, it was worth a shot. Alright, so I guess we're just gonna go with the gold. Um... Uh, I, I, like, back home, I guess a hit like this kind of would, I don't know. Kashoot, you got any experience with that one? She says, for the 750 is not doable. She said, for six of you, all striking, she could pay 1,200, 200 each. But she would need to ensure that the, the message is clear, not soft pedaled. Well, I Got suppose it. we could we could come back with one of their heads if we manage to, you know. Not it. Um, the message doesn't need to be clear to her. She already knows the message. We need to make the message clear to the rest of them. Yeah, I was thinking, like, literally writing a message, don't fuck with us. So on the graffiti. ground, without your fire or something, you know? Like a, like an actual message. I can see about I rigging up some explosives. I, I don't place think they I... want to be implicated. Can shoot, we'll look to the, uh, the forearmed lady. She says, it doesn't, that is correct. We don't need our name associated directly with it. I assure you, we will make sure they know that whatever message came from us through non-obvious channels, but we want it clear that the punishment they suffer is severe. Kicking down their door and throwing noxious gas into their storehouse is insufficient, if I'm making my point clear. Oh, yeah. You want them there. to suffer. We understand. Yeah, this guy knows all about suffering. And I was just thinking that we'd write Daytar sucks all over their facility, and that would be enough. But... No. no. I mean, we could do that with their blood, I guess. Oh. How gruesome. Oh boy, here we go killing again. It's the greatest mercy you can give someone. So, 200 gold each? Man, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about fair. Yes. And this would be in in replacement if she can't find the information on the belly Annika cord. That works for me. And I would if, say that's good, yes. And if you get information, if she gets information on Lomrick, she will trade it for information, specifically the exact location of this gate. We don't know the exact location because we are unfamiliar with the area, but we could tell you how to get there. Information that leads very quickly to the exact location of the gate, she corrects. Yeah. 
Sounds good to me. She uh, pulls out a uh, contract and fills in the assorted details. Vague on the actual details of the mission, specific on the compensation. Four services rendered. Four services rendered. And slides it over. For each of you to sign. Reading it over and signing it. Ditto. Gotta read the fine print. Is there any fine print? There is not. Oh. It's more along the lines of, you know, that way you can't deny, and if, you know, there's any issues and quibbling over the details, they probably won't take you, take you to court. I signed it. I don't even read it. They'll, they would probably work with another group. Like we are. <laughs> I feel like what they're hiring you to do also carries with it information on how they would address any agreements that they have with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alka signs it um, by uh, cutting their finger and putting some blood on it. They don't have a signature. Yes, sure. It's fucking baller. She... You get a slight raised eyebrow, but nothing too extreme. She's pretty clear. It's pretty clear she's seen some weird stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess is this, if this is what my bodyguard team wants to do, then uh, I guess I'll go along with it. And here's a little sign. The way I see it, we are probably going to kill these people anyway, eventually. Now might as well get... That's... but might not be entirely true. <laughs> you see how they operate. Who? We've never met these people before. Criminals. <laughs> Aren't, doesn't this make us criminals? No, this is a legally binding contract. Wow, I posted that in the wrong chat. I'm gonna move it. What are we talking about? I posted the what a jaglodyne looks like in the chat. Ooh. Super fucking weird and ugly. Poor insectoid. Not hard to find. She's uh, forearmed. Right, but not an insectoid. I'm just saying. I'm not saying bad forearmed. I'm saying stand out of hold. You could probably try to go inconspicuous because there are other forearmed creatures, but insectoid definitely gives it away. Alright, so is there any questions you guys have? This is true. They're two armed, I think, maybe four. Thrike Queen are like fourteen armed, aren't they? <laughs> they're they're like praying mantises. They've got like you gotta count all, all the fucking arms. arms. <laughs> is that Jackledine? Count the arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. All right. Count. Anybody got any questions for her? As she rolls up the contract and starts leading you guys out. I'll take, take the silence as a no. Uh, I do have one question. How do we reach you in case um, it goes sideways? You report success or failure or questions to the gate guards here at our compound, and they will reach out to you. Okay. And as you step back out into the noisy streets, are ushered forward out of the light and you can take a break. <laughs> I'm not getting offline, but you can take a break. Is everyone's alignment evil in this fucking campaign or <laughs> I will no, have you know that I'm true neutral. neutral. I mean, is there most quests in D D are still pay for murder. Just a matter of you know, <laughs> frills. <laughs> There's a, there's a necromancer outside of town. Go kill him. 
Did I say true neutral? I meant lawful neutral, but neutral nevertheless. And what they're doing is legal according to the laws of this city. That's fair. That's fair, I guess. And we don't have to kill them. Just doesn't sit right with Hazel's We're going morality. to. <laughs> <laughs> we she don't didn't have say to. Kill. We're going to. <laughs> if we show up and there are a bunch of like teenagers just like stealing shit to like get by and they're like Now pick cracks their knuckles. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> 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 Fuck those guys specifically. Cashew's like, I hate kids. <laughs> okay, so yes, 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 so we're all evil. See, I can't be part kill... of one of these campaigns again. If you're gonna kill the kids, you gotta handle it in a kid-like way. Just like start. I'm gonna start swinging my glaive. If your fucking head happens to fill the space, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not my problem. Not my problem. That's your fault. That seems fair. If to they me. are kids, if they are kids, then Kazu can just adopt them. I'm not sure. I mean, all I'm of not them. I'm not convinced that wouldn't send a torturous message, but I'm not convinced it would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony would have to come up with so many names. We'll fucking adopt all your kids if you don't get your act together. <laughs> 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 and then we'll make them go and do dangerous shit like dungeon crawling. Well, Kazu would like to be a dad one day, so... Adopting them would be in character for him. Or threatening to adopt them. Get up there. Everybody have a good... Anybody go trick-or-treating? <laughs> Did you go trick-or-treating, Mal? I was sick, actually, this Halloween. Rough. Well, I guess not on the day of Halloween, but the day of Halloween for me. That's bullshit. I know, right? Let me get a note going. From Never myself. work in an office, my friends. I do work in an office, but I work all alone. of the bastards with kids get you sick. That is true. How do you think, how do you think I feel? Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do you feel? Nobody knows bastards every day. <laughs> I literally had a kid wipe his snot on my fucking coat today. He ran to me from across the playground. Put his face on my stomach, and I was like, oh, that's cute. He's rubbing his face up against my my baby belly. And then wiped his snot across my jacket and ran off. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Holy shit, prenatal bullying. I cannot handle that. <laughs> and then there's the times where it's like I'm talking to the kid, and they turn and look at me and sneeze right into my open mouth. And I'm like, I need you to walk away from me right now before I gut punch you. <laughs> Kids are fucking terrible nowadays. Oh, God, I love them so much, but I fucking hate them sometimes. Nah, they're terrible. No. <laughs> Push them off of their bicycles. Sometimes I do. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The fucking joke. Fuck, you could watch kids fall off of bicycles all day. That was a joke. <laughs> it's like literally a joke. Like, uh, I'm so stressed now. Just because I've loaded to YouTube, I could lose my job. 
Uh, well, that's the problem, uh, unless you want me to edit that out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just kidding. I mean, it, is, it, 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 it was on a break. That's true. Anything that's set on break is not canon. Yep. Anything said during this podcast is not liable to any persons or places involved. <laughs> The actions in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what we are is we are live streaming right now. It's already too late. Right. So, oh, yeah, it's too late. Fuck I don't you, think world. we're that popular. I, no. think all of our, I think all of our bosses watch this and in secret and don't tell us. We got canceled before we even started. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. You hear me? <laughs> But yeah, for the record, we are live, so you might want to watch what you say. Nah. Nah. <laughs> if Tyler's boss is listening... The man can't fucking silence me. You can't censor this. If my boss is listening, fuck you. <laughs> you, you. You didn't come to my Halloween party. <sighs> That's rude as hell. She can't. It happens. What, to go to, like, a dog's birthday party or something? Oh, yeah, she's dealing with that. She's dealing with her kids stuff. But that is a solid <laughs> That's fucking incredible. We were talking about that last week, weren't we? Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. It was just incredible recall, because I totally forgot about it until you said something. How could I forget about the dog's birthday party? In Kentucky, <laughs> which amazing. is another state away. That's like a... Uh, I think it's it was in Louisville. So what's that, Eddie? A two and a half hour drive one way? Yeah. Ish. So five hour drive round trip for a dog's <laughs> birthday party. Trip to our house, 20 minutes. That's some dog. <laughs> that That's is, a special dog. And I think... Don't Dad, they need to keep this fucking dog alive. That's a good boy right there. <laughs> and... And based on my 40 years of experience, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that most male friendships would probably survive that. But female friendships? Nah. You guys are savage. Savage. That's some straight up bullshit, though. Like... <laughs> you see how it's fucked, right? <laughs> I do. I do. So, yeah. The friendship is not gonna last. I'm pretty sure it's already over. Already yeah, already. it's fucking over before it began, to be honest. All right, let's see. I scrolled up because I'm copying information in here. Looks like uh, we're still missing one. It's me. I'm here. I just didn't click. Not oh, How dare you not inform Guard? <laughs> I'm filling out my notes real quick. All right, so I got that. I'll I'll clean that up a little later. Um, some bookkeeping stuff. I waited too late to try and plan the Halloween game. Obviously, it's November first. We're not going to do a Halloween game this year. I'm sorry. We'll do a Christmas something or another. I didn't have enough people sign up. Um, no worries. And the days for the people that did sign up didn't all match up. We'll definitely do a holiday game, you know, sometime around holiday-ish season. Yay! But uh, I'll send another uh, form out. And... So, once you guys get back out onto the street, I got I found my notes. You guys have been in the city for six days, and this is the sixth. So you're... Um, what you will want to do now is decide where you want to go. It's, you know, maybe five you guys have had. I mean, sorry, you guys, uh, it's probably towards evening now. Um, you guys fit, got off work between three and five. You waited four-ish hours, and then you had an hour-ish meeting with Osirak. And now... It's regarding what you guys have some time. Does anybody want to do anything for the rest of the day? Are you guys looking to go straight to? And um, as you guys were leaving, 
she gave you directions on where to find the uh, safe house of the Daytar. Okay. Out. Is there value to waiting just a little bit later and going in the dead of night, or...? That's up to you, but based on my D&D games for this week, I would recommend scouting. Yeah, I was just about to yeah. suggest that. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad idea. For scouting, do we all this? go, or, or does maybe just Kashut go, or...? <laughs> Maybe one or two of us, just in case something happens, but otherwise, we definitely need to scout. And it does not have to be tonight. And I'm, I'm talking about, like, dealing with the issue in general. Yeah. We have time. Yeah, I would like to leave Burner in uh, Kazu's room to keep him safe. Burner will stay like a good boy. I'll stay behind to keep an eye on him. I have disadvantage on stealth anyway, so. So, uh, I was going to mention that to you guys, but since it was brought up, I'm going to go ahead because it's a great time to mention it. Uh, two things worth your attention. Number one, Burner is going to be treated as a vanity pet. I do understand that that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you guys because. Um, D&D doesn't have rules on vanity pets, but <clears throat> I do have rules on vanity pets. It's part of some of the stuff I have written up, so I am going to send that over. And so Burner is basically going to be a party vanity pet if you want to be affiliated with, you know, Burner. It's, uh, if anybody wants to claim him as their own... You're also welcome to do that. But I'm going to share that. I was going to send that over anyway, so I'll just... That's the rules on Vanity Pets. I haven't updated them. As with all the stuff I uh, write down, feedback is strongly encouraged. There. And next, downtime activities are going to be coming up in the next couple... Uh, games probably not like next game but maybe in five six games so downtime activities are going to be something I'll get more in depth on Eddie has a lot of experience with him and so I'm still fine-tuning them some of them won't apply like organizations here on Emerald Enclave, for example, isn't going to be on Zellar Ghost, but if you guys wanted to join a coterie, that's an option you could do. I'll give more details on downtime activity in the chat of Discord or Facebook, so I'm not using our game time up and to go into a long-winded thing. But essentially, downtime activities are going to be detailed things that you do over long periods of time to develop your character in ways outside of adventure. I think, what was the average time you guys probably took in the other game, Eddie, to do downtime activities? Like, several months. Yeah, four or five months leading. I think one time they took a year off of adventuring and yeah. focused on stuff like that. So, we'll go from there. But, as for scouting, um, the of our Coterie gives you information about where to find the Daytar safe house. And then after that, it is yours to address. Would you guys like me to apply a long rest so you guys get some sleep or do you are you looking to go tonight? I know you said it wasn't required, but I was just looking for what you're doing. Your stag will go scout tonight because, I mean, there's no time like the present. Yeah, scouting now makes more sense. Yep, might as well. Alright, who is all going? Well, where is, where is this located? It is in a section of the city that is more remote 
it is actually behind a behind and underneath a statue that has some reference to a hero from long ago before Zellar Ghost was a capital city. He saved the city. They built a statue um, to celebrate him and then his events from Argosian society and the safe house is underneath the statue. The entrance to it is anyways. Um, if you would like to know more information about the guy and why there's a statue of them, you're more than welcome to spend some time in looking into that, but that's where you find the safe house. Where is it at, though? Like, on the map? <laughs> I didn't have a specific location, but let me just pinpoint one randomly without reason. No how worries. About, <laughs> like, how about right here? I'm offended. I don't, I don't see it. And now it's right there even more, because <laughs> you're offended. Well, I like how like <laughs> I like how you're like, where's it at? And Tony's going into like all this like in-depth detail, and you're, we just want to know where it's at on the map. <laughs> I just want to look at it. I just want to see how far I have to walk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the answer was good. The answer was good. Um, so is there like a tavern or like a like a, a social place nearby that the rest of us could maybe just be hanging out at in case there's like shouting and you're, you're There's back up? Not. It's all residential. I can go with Kashut. I'm half decently stealthy. And I can just talk to people. I could go. I got a plus two in stealth. Hazel needs to justify this fucking action. <laughs> I have a uh, plus one in stealth, but I have a minus one in charisma, so I am not going. Okay, why don't we do this? Why don't the stealthy people go and check it out? The rest of us will... Oh, wait, no, it's like middle of the night, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably 8 o'clock at night. So knocking on people's doors to ask for That's charity for, for the church is probably not a good idea. I mean, that's what they do in real life. Yeah. Yeah. But usually they wait until you're eating dinner, not usually after dinner. Right, right. It's too early. It's too late in the day. Yeah. Why don't Why don't we do this? This is This is like This is a classic. We're We just gotta get some like whips, or <laughs> like strands of cloth, and we'll just walk down the street, um, like whipping ourselves, right? Uh, in the name of, right, of, of Ill <laughs> yeah. No, no, because then like they're actually gonna not want to look at this. I've noticed in the past, and then um, like then like it's like a like, perfect camouflage. Yeah, it's so fucking hard no for me, bud. I was just just looking at Arthanis like he's nuts. It's like, very common for. The followings of Belmater and like pilgrimage purposes. Sure, 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 sure. Not a pilgrim, so. Um, or we could just like you know wander around and pretend that we're looking at houses for sale. That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard anybody ever say. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna fucking believe that. God damn it. Okay, let's go try and buy a house. And uh, good luck, you stealthy people. Like, do they even buy and sell houses in this world? Like, I have a question. <laughs> yes, yeah. they buy property. What How can we buy a house if we don't have money yet? If we haven't paid. Uh, it's called window shopping. Uh... My <laughs> We're just checking out the neighborhood, seeing what houses are available and if we like it. Especially at nighttime, when things can get sketchy. So the question is, I know Kashut's going, I know Hazel yep. is going, and I heard Kazu is going. Yes. Is anyone else going? 
Nalka is not particularly um, confident in their ability to stay hidden. Yeah, Techno can't stealth very well, so he's just going to stay behind. Okay. <laughs> so as... yeah, at the last second, I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to go with them. The last second. Yep. Bada boom. Yes, I could take Burner along. We can be walking him. Uh, Burner's, uh can be there or not be there. He won't have a token. He's a vanity pet. Okay. So, uh, as you guys approach, it is essentially a, a small, very old uh, garden with very overgrown trees that kind of overhang. An ancient cenotaph stands here, flanked by massive trees that haven't been cut in a while, uh, surrounded by a thicket of overgrown shrubbery. So you can definitely tell this is this is not well tended. People maybe come here occasionally. Um, it's a rectangular base. The statue is upon, and it the statue itself is crumbling, representing a bearded humanoid raising a stone spear towards the sky. There's a plaque that says Valdo Char. And it appears to have an inscription, but it's covered in dirt and grime and viney plants. Stealthy like a cat. All right, you need to go away. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to kill my stealth rolls. <laughs> I'll go the opposite way. I am following Hazel. Shoot, it's going to go. Why? <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you my God. Guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cat like tread upon our prey we steal. <laughs> Wow. Well, <laughs> what is hey, happening? Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the club. That's fucking hilarious. She Cause she just immediately fucking trips. walks, trips over a stick. Yeah. See what happens when you kill others. You get distracted. You know what? I'm not part of this crew, but just for fun's sake, just just for the hell of it, if I had bothered to come along. Drop the 17. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I didn't come along. I wouldn't have been any better. So you guys approach this statue. Um, I was just checking out the statue. It's fine. You don't see any guards. You don't see any lookouts. I... Hazel will cast uh, Detect Thoughts. Second level spell. <laughs> right, what's the range? 30 feet. But it can't go through more than 2 feet of stone. Okay. You do but not he'll... detect any thoughts other than your companion. Yeah, he'll just... Uh, it lasts like a minute, so he'll just walk around and see if he can sense anything. That's just surface thoughts, right? Yep. Okay, thank God. Unless I probe deeper, but yeah, surface thoughts. Why? What's Australia thinking? Uh, surface on the on the, the outside. God, is that like is a, uh, <laughs> No, it's more of like a okay. I can't leave Hazel alone for too long. I like I'm worried about him. But then on the other hand, going fuck, I really shouldn't have come because like I am crunching on every single leaf. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I am shit, good at this. Fuck, God damn it! God fuck. So, <laughs> out of character note, I didn't design these maps, and when I decided to run this for you guys, there was a very short period where I was thinking about redoing all the maps to not suck, but here we are. So, yeah, I was just about to say, like, you can basically outline the entire facility. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about the fact that they are 
the, the story is great. They're lazy with maps, but that's standard in D and D. So uh, the the only thing that's actually here is a large field with a statue and a or stone rectangle base that you can partially see right here. This is the base. Help. <laughs> I'm stuck in a bush. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, Hazel just walks around and he doesn't detect anything other than his companions? Correct. Okay. Well, oh, I don't so sense anything there. nearby. I don't see anything either. Oh, yeah. You said it was hidden underneath the statue? Just a head. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, like. Do I casually... see anything cool? Casually lean against the, uh, the statue. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, Kazu and Hazel, with your perception, uh, definitely not a shoot. <laughs> you Too guys busy stumbling find around. a hidden staircase at the back. And I can move you in into it yep. as you get close yeah. but <laughs> nope we found it i don't need to go in let me out let me... Let you... <laughs> <laughs> where, where did it go um i, I will put you in there uh, right now there you go thank you so you find yourself looking down a stairwell that descends uh, behind the secret door, leading to in the earthern stairwell. It descends to a landing, then it turns to the north and continues what appears to be, at least from what you can see, further down another earthern stairwell. This stairwell descends, you know, 10, 15 feet and then turns, you can't see. There are stray tree roots that have burst through the ceiling overhead, so it's definitely not even reinforced. And there's <clears throat> uh, some roots along the wall. You can see from here, Kashut, there is uh, light coming from the north. Okay. Now you guys have found the entrance. I can move you guys in as you see fit. If you're going deeper, if you're not going deeper, that's a different thing. Give me just a second um, before you go too deep there, because this door is not functioning in the way I want it to. So give me a second. Hazel staying up top. Yeah, I'm not okay. going in there. If anything, I will. Uh hide in the bush and keep looking out. Hazel will act like he's just sitting there reading the book. Alright, so I am fixing this here. And are you wanting to explore deeper, Kashut, or are you leaving? I'm going to go in just a smidge so that I can, like, try and hear if I can get, like, an, a gauge or an estimate on how many people are down there. Okay. From where I am. Or from where... Like, I'll peek slightly around that corner. As you've got your back. Oh, yeah, I had to roll a dice. Hold on. We're good. I see your rolls. I was fixing my shitty one. There you go. Now you guys can get in and out. 
Alright, so I see your stealth roll, and you're just moving down with your passive perception, hoping to listen. And where are you going to? Just right there. Like, at the end of these stairs, peeking around the corner, looking down, and listening. So you go to the end of the stairs, you peek around, you see the staircase descends another 10 feet, and a simple room with a simple single door leading north. You, you can see the rooms a little bit off to the left and right with some torch sconces on the either side of the door. Um, inside of the actual room, uh, do you want to roll an active perception? Yeah, I will. Give me Good one time. second. Give me one second. Uh, I saw someone did this on a different. I, I it was a someone wrote. Ah, let me try something. They. It's up to you guys, but I, I saw what someone did on another game. They wrote perception, and then they changed it. Ah, uh, fuck. I clicked too fast trying to help. And they added a perception so that when they, and they put their oh, passive at the end, so when they rolled it would say, you know, passive 14. Let's see, guys. I saw someone did that. I thought it was neat. Oh, so that you would know what the passive is? More so you would know. I have a sheet that has all of them. Gotcha. gotcha. It's more for you guys than for me. But okay. uh, you do not see any guards. You okay. do not hear any guards. All right. I'm going to quietly step down to the end here and, like, look around the edges here to see if they're on either side of these corners. Mm -hmm. To see if there are any guards there. Give me one second. So you, ah, damn it. You step down and you are taking a look around and you hear three things when you first step onto the platform. I'm not, oh, onto that platform. Onto this okay. platform, you hear a metallic sounding gong give me a arcana check i don't know what no. it is. Uh, you kazu are also in there you can give me a arcana, arcana. check okay cool oh dang so as, as Kazu is standing back and Kashut is very skillfully stealthing ahead, you hear a gong sound as Kashut trips an alarm spell on that platform there. Oh shit. Uh, Kashut, I think we're, they know we're here. Kashut will quickly turn around and get the fuck out of there. And Kazu is following behind. Seeing her uh, companions outside, uh, she will say we need to go quick. Like, yes. get, out. Run. get out of the Gotta area. Go fast. But get out of the area, but stay close enough that we can see where they go if they leave. So you guys leave and stay close by? I might have misunderstood. We we get out of the immediate area, but we want to go somewhere where we're still going to be able to see where Looking they go. Big cover. 
Got it. Yeah. Like, if they come out and start leaving, we want to see where they go. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, you... There's... Say again? And there is a lot of uh, shrubbery and overgrown trees that can probably cover them. Maybe. So, as you guys are nearby, probably not in the shrubbery around the statue, but the area is quiet for a few minutes, and eventually you see a, a single guard make their way up and peek out into the area around the statue come out from behind the statue walk all the way around the statue looking at the locals in a uh, suspicious way before going back behind the statue and disappearing What did you do? There was a trap. Yeah, an alarm. Why are you supposed to see those? It was a magical alarm. Oh, okay, all right. So how do we get past that next time? Well, now we know it's there. We'll just... I'll just need to be a little more vigilant on other traps if there are any. Has the rest of the group, like, seen any of this? I need you to elaborate on that one. Because we were walking around pretending to try and buy houses, right? I mean, but, like, in the, but like in the area. You, I mean, it would depend on their, but yeah, most of their role, kind of stealth rolls from earlier, so they were very poorly attempting to sneak out. So perhaps we'd all walk over and join up with them? I would guess so. On the chance that anybody sold me a house for like 200 gold? No. Yeah. <laughs> what about 400? So, uh, just from my interpretation of things, that did not go very well, huh? No. We found out where it is, and how to get in. So what's the plan? Who are we... I say all going we in with force? Set up. Are we all here? I believe so. Yes. We could either all go in or we could set up watch to just watch them throughout the night and throughout tomorrow and then go in tomorrow night when they'll be slightly relaxed more so than they would be right now since, you know, I tripped the alarm. Yeah. You guys aren't on a time frame, per se. I mean, common sense time frame. That makes sense to me. Is there, is there a chance that they leave tonight, though? That's why we set up a, a watch, so that we can see them if they do leave. True, but just... Like, what'd you find? Like, it, is there only the one way in and out? I only saw it this way. I don't know if there's any other way. So, I mean, there is that risk. And well, and additionally, if there is only one way in or out, we could just, like, bury them alive or something. I mean, that would send a message. 
But we wouldn't get any of the spoils down there. We could come back in three days, eight days. Yeah. For that what? specific time frame. <laughs> <laughs> what if they have food and water down there? They can survive a long time. They might. Yeah, okay, I got it. Or digging supplies. Sure, sure, all around. So, what do we think? Do we. Do we wait? And, and I mean, it's definitely the safer option, but we might lose them. But then again, worst case scenario, we just can't fulfill our end of the bargain. I say we, I say we wait the day we bake out the place, be as you know stealthy as we can, give it a day, and then go back tomorrow evening. Agreed. But that's just my opinion. I will, if you guys want to go in there now, we can. I think it's safe to say that we are probably going to be um, found quite easily if we go in tonight. Yeah, since we tripped the alarm, they'll probably, we'll probably be expecting be... someone. Or at least on high alert. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. I could, I could wild shape into like a bug or a cockroach or something, and like go down there and like look around. But yeah. <laughs> what if they squish you? Cockroaches never die. It's true. Naka looks horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like wiggling my fingers? <laughs> Getting stepped on would still hurt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then I'd probably instantly revert to my own form. But I'd have to just, you know, be avoided. I suppose you can heal yourself. Yeah. I think it's an unnecessary risk. I mean, we confirm they're here, I suppose, and that they have defenses. This would give us a an idea if there is another way out. But like, if something goes wrong, we have no way of knowing. That's true. You could continue to detect thoughts, couldn't you? I can only detect thoughts for about a minute at a time. And oh. only once more today. Unfortunately. Also, well, maybe twice more. If you're not even sure if you have thoughts as a bug, maybe you've this whole plan is just pointless. I never tried. I'm trying. To find out. Do I it. think it's worth the risk. <laughs> Why don't you turn into a bug and then crawl up onto Kashut's sh uh, shoulder? If you can pull that off, maybe you can do the rest. Okay. I will turn. <laughs> use one of my wild shapes to turn into a cockroach. And then I will climb up to shoot's arm and sit on it sh on it, their shoulder. You know, for posterity, you get a. You, I'm gonna go ahead and give you your own uh, creature, but it's going to be a spider sheet because you're not gonna actually be in combat. So you know. For posterity, I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything else. Astrea. So, Astrea, I think this is the first time you've done this. Go under your character sheet. Last tab. If you notice, I changed uh, it to say wild shape and cockroach. Yeah. Click active. 
<laughs> and now everybody should be able to see the aforementioned cockroach. Yep. Correct? Correct. Yep. So Correct small. If you wish to go in, I will need to know that. I'll climb on Kashut's arm first, and then I'll wait for instructions. Because I keep all my my mental capacity as a cockroach, right? Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. So I would I would be able to remember that. That's the instructions I was given. guys like to uh, decide as a group or I mean so is she going in Not I guess you can do this I say yes yeah Why not? Okey -dokey. it would be my suggestion with eight minutes left in the game you guys not put yourself in a position of trying to remember what she explores tonight for next, for next game. Yeah, I think I would just right. at the simplest thing. I would like I don't know, use one of my weird fucking legs to tap Kashut on the shoulder to be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Is Kashut going with you? No. Okay. I'm not walking all that distance. I don't know how far away we are. They're taking <laughs> forever as a cockroach. Years probably. <laughs> Six legs were made for walking. And that's, so that's just, just what they all do. Well, apparently not. Well, all right. <laughs> that's what she'll refuse to do. All right, we will burn that bridge. Next game. Um, vanity pets. It's completely so downtime activities, vanity pets, that type of stuff. It's it's designed for character development outside of the game it's just really intended for you guys to have fun with you can train them they're not combat i won't let them be combat burner's not going to be fighting alongside you but kind of fun if you want to train them they can have some function i'll leave it up to you guys to explore downtime activities is a little bit of both we'll burn those bridges as we get closer to them just a heads up on those so if anybody has any questions comments concerns or complaints send them to eddie all right, Eddie, here's what the fuck is up. Oh, why? Wow. I'm just kidding. If you find any typos or you have any feedback, like vanity pets and stuff like that, let me know. I, like, I, I'm writing this stuff. I may eventually publish it for other people to use for free. But That's I'd, cool. rather not, I'd rather not have 50 typos. And Burner what? even de develop a... A bond since he's a robot? They can. Oh, nice. If he can develop hatred for somebody, he can develop a bond. <laughs> That's true. He That's true. hates my guts. <laughs> I wouldn't say that he hates you so much that he's just indifferent. No, I actively walked towards him at one point and he literally scurried away. That's hate. You scared him. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I can't, I can't exactly argue with that one, but. All right. <laughs> well, good game, guys. Yeah, good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Yep. Good rolls. Good rolls. Yeah, yeah, great, great rolls. Eddie, don't disconnect. Okay. Uh, okay. Shit rolls. Shit rolls all around. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Talk to you next week. Bye. 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 Later, everyone. Later. Later. All right, Eddie.